we'd like to thank you for allowing us the opportunity to update you on the Wakaiva Parkway. We'll provide you with general information about the project, and then we'll be happy to answer questions at the end. My name is Nick Lully, Community Outreach Specialist for Wakaiva Parkway. I'm joined by Brad Balknecht, the Consultant Project Administrator for Wakaiva Parkway Section 7B, which is the construction project for State Road 46 between Orange Boulevard and Wayside Drive, Oregon Street. My contact information will be provided toward the end of this presentation. Just to give you a quick big picture view, here you can see how the 25 mile Wakaiva Parkway is filling in the Beltway's missing link. The long awaited parkway is providing travel alternatives and ultimately will enhance safety and relieve traffic congestion on roads like US 441, State Road 46, and other area roads. In fact, we're already seeing this on some local roads. The $1.6 billion Wakaiva Parkway, a new 25 mile toll road, is being developed by the Florida Department of Transportation, or FDOT and the Central Florida Expressway Authority, or CFX. The Florida's Turnpike Enterprise will collect the tolls on the FDOT sections. The parkway includes a number of non-tolled road improvements. The agencies will widen about seven miles of State Road 46. We've rebuilt the US 441 State Road 46 interchange in Mount Dora, and we've moved part of County Road 46A out of the Seminole State Forest so wildlife can move safely between habitats. We're also building parallel, non-tolled service roads for local travel. FDOT is also including a multi-use trail along much of the parkway. You can see some of that taking shape right now. The parkway is expected to help spur significant economic development, including the creation of nearly 36,000 jobs, both directly and indirectly, during design, which has been completed, and construction, which is going on now. The Wakaiva Parkway represents a unique transportation solution that also helps to protect wildlife and other natural resources in the Wakaiva River Basin. The agencies have diligently adhered to the 2004 Wakaiva Parkway and Protection Act, including buying 3,400 acres of land for conservation and planning four substantial wildlife bridges. The parkway will have a minimal number of interchanges. The idea is to reduce the amount of related development in this environmentally sensitive area. Here you can see the overall schedule for the Wakaiva Parkway. The left column shows the various parkway sections. That red vertical line shows where we currently are in the schedule. Design, represented by the orange bars and right-of-way acquisition, or the purchase of property needed for the project, is indicated by the purple bars and is complete. Construction, shown in green, should finish in 2023 with all the parkway then being open to traffic. The overall Wakaiva Parkway corridor map here shows the FDOT sections labeled in green and the CFX sections in purple. This snapshot shows when the various Wakaiva Parkway sections are expected to open to traffic. The 13 miles of parkway currently open to traffic are noted here in yellow. Weather, holidays, special events, and other factors impact the schedule so this date is subject to change. We'll start off with section six in the west, which travels through East Lake County across the Wakaiva River and into Seminole County. It is the longest parkway section at about six miles long. Work began on section six on October 17th, 2017. This is a design build project and it's largely replacing State Road 46 with the elevated parkway and a parallel non-tolled service road for local trips. Currently, State Road 46 traffic is on these new service roads in several locations. The non-tolled service road will allow drivers to continue to travel east or west without paying a toll. Some of the next shifts coming up will include a shift onto the final wildlife crossing on the west side of the project, which is just east of State Road 429. That's going to take traffic off of the temporary metal bridge in that area now. Traffic will shift into a roundabout configuration near Osprey Hammock Trail, that's just east of the Wakaiva River, in early 2021. This will impact some neighborhoods there on the west side of Seminole County, but it's going to improve access for those neighborhoods as well. Heading east on Section 7A, which extends the parkway 3.5 miles along the State Road 46 corridor, 
from east of Wakaiva Park Drive to Orange Boulevard in Seminole County. Section 7A features a four-lane elevated parkway, and you'll see those dark gray lines shown here in the middle of the corridor, paralleled by non-tolled service roads with one lane in each direction, north and south of the parkway. This section features roundabouts at certain intersections and will provide access to the parkway via six slip ramps, three in each direction. Traffic will split sometime in 2021, and there's work to tie into the Section 6 project using the roundabout at Longwood Markham Road. Now on to Section 7B, which is just outside Lake Forest. It's the last non-tolled improvement for the Parkway Corridor. It involves widening State Road 46 to six lanes from Orange Boulevard to Oregon Street and Wayside Drive. This project began in July 2019, and it's scheduled to finish in late 2021. Traffic was recently shifted, as I'm sure you know, to use some of the new eastbound lanes. Work is beginning now to widen that north side of the corridor for the future westbound lanes. Section 8 is a design-build project that includes the new Wakaiva Parkway interchange at I-4 that will connect with State Ridge 417, then completing the beltway around Central Florida. This section started construction in December 2018, and it's scheduled to finish in 2023 with a financial incentive for the contractor to finish early. As I'm sure you've noticed, there are some shifts to some of the ramps at 417 and I-4, so you want to pay close attention to the signage in the area for changed access points. Your decision points for if you want to get off at some of those exits may have changed. I'd like to thank George Celery and some of the others at Lake Forest for providing some questions in advance, and we'd like to answer some of those now. When is the current scheduled end date for the project? The Wakaiva Parkway Section 7B project is scheduled to be completed by the end of 2021, so about a year, with weather and other factors permitting. The entire Wakaiva Parkway corridor is scheduled to be completed in early 2023. What will the speed limit be for the widened roadway from Orange Boulevard to Interstate 4? The speed limit will be 45 miles per hour. Will there be a sidewalk on the Lake Forest side of State Road 46, or will it be a wider bike path? There will be a standard 5 feet wide sidewalk on the north side of State Road 46, adjacent to Lake Forest. A 10 feet wide sidewalk path was constructed on the south side of State Road 46. Will there be a crosswalk at the Lake Forest Boulevard light that connects to the new sidewalk on the south side of State Road 46? Or will those walking or riding bikes need to go to either International or Orange Boulevard to cross the highway? There will be crosswalks across State Road 46 at every signalized intersection, including at Lake Forest Boulevard. So the answer is yes. Will there be a median between the east and westbound lanes from Orange Boulevard to Oregon Street? And if so, will it be a landscaped median? There will be a median, and it's going to vary between a blend of grass, concrete, and landscaping, depending on where you're at. Landscaping will be performed as part of a separate project after the road construction project is complete. When the project is completed, what is the anticipated timing sequence for the State Road 46 traffic light? And will that sequence be the same throughout a 24-hour period of time, especially late at night or early in the morning? That traffic signal will be timed adequately depending on the day and time period. The signal will also feature advanced detection to see if vehicles are queuing, and it will also be connected to the Intelligent Transportation System, or ITS, to further enhance it and ensure it stays in sync with the traffic conditions along the whole corridor. So when everything is done, all of it will be interconnected, so the traffic signals will be talking to one another. Will residents be able to enter the new parkway going either direction at International Parkway? Or will entry to the 429 heading west have to come by driving west on State Road 46 and picking up the parkway west of Orange Boulevard? So yes, access to both State Road 429 and State Road 417 at International Parkway will be full service. And that means ramps to and from all directions will be constructed. Will residents be able to enter onto Interstate 4 from International, or will residents wanting to access I-4 still need to use the current entry ramps that are in use now by heading east on State Road 46 just past Oregon Street? Residents will not 
be able to access I-4 from International Parkway, so you'll want to use the existing ramps at State Road 46 that you use today. When approximately will our new deceleration lane into Lake Forest be constructed? So that new turn lane into Lake Forest will be constructed closer to the end of the project once the roadway is widened on that side. Will the HOA board have any input coordination with the re-landscaping for the roadway sidewalk area that borders our property? So the landscaping options were decided in the 2013 Wakaiva Parkway Aesthetic Guidelines, uh, which basically promotes uh, native species and other sustainable species for Florida. This document, as well as specific plans for this specific project, can be found on our website, wakaivaparkway.com. As I said before, that landscaping project will be a separate project following the roadway construction project. Now, once you review some of those plans, if you have any specific requests or comments, you can email me at info at wakaivaparkway.com and we'll display that contact information next, again. So again, we hope we addressed most of your questions tonight. We certainly appreciate you showing up tonight and, and attending this virtual presentation. Uh, here's the contact information if you have any follow-up questions or concerns or anything at all at any time. Uh, my name again is Nick Lully, and I'm part of the community outreach team, uh, which includes several people on it. So we do have a 24-hour hotline and email address. So that hotline number is 407-710-5610. And it is a voicemail box, basically. So you leave a message, and we'll call you back uh, very, very quickly. Our email address is info at wakaivaparkway.com. Also, that's again monitored 24-7. Uh, we'll respond to you accordingly. And our project website is www.wakaivaparkway.com. Can answer most of your questions. We have a huge resource library on there uh, that's broken down by section. So you can view plans for outside Lake Forest right there on the section 7B page of wakaivaparkway.com. And again, I'm usually the fastest conduit uh, into getting the most efficient uh, way to get your comments or concern across to the entire project team, whether it's here in Sanford or, or all the way out in Mount Dora, and I'm happy to do it. We will now move into our question and comments period live. Uh, and we certainly, again, appreciate everyone who attended tonight. If you don't wish to ask a question or leave a comment, you can drop off now. And if you do have a follow-up question, we will first unmute everyone's microphones on our administrator end, and then you will need to unmute your own microphone if you then wish to speak up and ask a question. So as soon as I'm done speaking now, we will click that button. And then again, if you would like to ask a question, please then unmute yourself. Thank you again for attending this evening and have a great rest of your week. Okay, thanks again, everyone for attending. I have gone ahead and unmuted. Uh, everyone's microphone, so you should now have direct control if you would like to ask a question. Hi, this is Barb Jennings, and I do have a question. Can you hear me? We can hear you, yes. Thank you. Oh, perfect. Okay. What is being done regarding the noise reduction? So, um, as far as official uh, noise reduction measures, there were only a few areas along the entire corridor that qualified. Uh, for noise, official noise abatement. Um, there is a federal criteria uh, that is set when um, FDOT constructs a noise wall. And you probably have noticed the one down the street at 12 Oaks. And 12 Oaks is one of three locations from Sanford to Mount Dora uh, that met the qualifications. There's a certain number uh, that has to be met as far as um, reducing the decibels as well as the cost benefit analysis. Um, generally speaking, you only really see those in areas that are very, very dense or very, very close to the roadway. Okay, thank you. This is Scott Koenig. I'd like to find out where we can get the recorded version of this so we could share it with some people that couldn't make it. Absolutely, so what's gonna happen is as soon as we end this tonight, uh, it will create that recording. It takes, you know, a few hours to create the video file. I will upload that to our Wakaiva Parkway website in a few different areas. So uh, if you ever are on our Wakaiva Parkway website, on the right-hand side, 
down the screen, you'll see something. This is presentations. Uh, it's on the, the right sidebar um, underneath a few of the different construction alerts uh, for the lane closures going on throughout the corridor. We will post it there. Um, I will also email it to your HOA management company, the link to that. So I'm guessing they would also then choose to post that um, on the Lake Forest uh, pages. I'm also coordinating with some other folks in there to uh, not only post the link to this, uh, but that, that list of questions I was sent to incorporate into this will provide that in a written form as well. So I think by the end of this, you know, give us uh, until tomorrow, uh, you should have different areas where you can find this. But on our end, ohioparkway.com under presentations. Could, could you repeat where you said that we would find this? I'm on the wakivaparkway.com. Um, which which heading would this be under? So um, it will be eventually posted. If you go to the right side of the Parkway website, do you see on that right bar how it starts with latest news? Yep. Okay, so scroll down and you'll see on that bar, there's something that says presentations in all caps and in bold. Got it. Didn't see we it. Will, Thank you. Yep, yep. We will post it there um, probably tomorrow sometime. Perfect, thank you. Absolutely. Do we have any other questions? And also, I'd like to just uh, give a shout out to Brad, who's here with us, the consultant project administrator. Brad, do you have anything additional you would like to add? Yeah, I could. Uh, for the people that live in Lake Forest, um, if there are any concerns or questions, just please note that Nick Lully is our point of contact. If there's anything to do with construction, he'll be able to relay that information to me, and I'll be able to do the. Uh, I'll be able to either correct or manage those issues or comments. It's a lot easier for us to take care of it internally at the lowest possible level, instead of having it come from DOT and then trickle down to us. And it's uh, later on that evening or, or, or another day. So the fastest way to get something resolved on this project, and I'm, I'm very diligent in making sure that I can make sure I take care of those issues is to contact Nick Lilly. And then I will be able to make sure those comments or concerns are taken care of as soon as possible. I have a question. Yes. Uh, Stan Smith here in Lake Forest. The uh, the riding surface on westbound between, say, Oregon and uh, Lake Forest, at least, is very rough. There's some bone jarring places there. Any chance that can get fixed? Brad, would you like to address that? And is it Stan I'm talking to? Yes. Hey, Stan. Hey, um, some of the temporary uh, pavement issues that we're having, we're trying to work with the contractor to get taken care of. Unfortunately, uh, we cannot uh, go by the same standards as temporary pavement, temporary pavement compared to permanent. So we are having some issues like that. We are trying to uh, get them resolved, but it will be a construction site. That's why we have uh, low profile barrier wall cones and everything to try to reduce some of that speed that we have going through our sites. Um, again, that is a concern of ours. We, we, are, we are aware of it. We're trying to make sure that we can take care of it as best we can. Yeah, you probably drive it too. So <laughs> good luck getting it. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. And uh, back to Brad's point, um, my information, of course, was in the presentation. Uh, it's on our Wakaiba Parkway website as well. And what I've gone ahead and done, uh, just until this gets posted, either late tonight or tomorrow, um, I went into the chat for this, to, went to everyone who's still attending, and I went and copied and pasted in that information uh, in case you wanted to save it right now. Uh, but again, it's also on our project website. So, um, and this is what I do all day, every day. 
um, again, from here all the way out to uh, our, our Mount Dora project actually just wrapped up recently, yeah. recently like the whole corridor is uh, I handle the concerns for. Uh, this is Bob Hewitt with, in Lake Forest. Uh, my question is, if you're on the parkway heading eastbound, it, where will the exit be to Lake Forest, to get down to Lake Forest? So uh, you would have two options. Uh, you could either get off um, right near, kind of near LaFleur Nursery, so basically Orange Boulevard area uh, would be one option. And then your next option would be to get off at International Parkway, close to where the current 417 ramps are, uh, you know, next to Ballantrae Apartments. So you'll have a couple options just depending on um, on how you want to take it. Thank you. Okay. Absolutely. Any other questions out there? Okay, I'll give it one more uh, one more time. Any other questions out there before we uh, complete this presentation for tonight? Oh, Stan Smith again. <clears throat> Um, it, it seems like the, uh, the signal at, let me think here, Orange Boulevard and, and 46 westbound, um, you, the left, left turn traffic headed eastbound gets a lot of time after the last car goes by and it, it's just, uh, probably 30 seconds from the, the last car passing and the the uh, signal for the westbound traffic to go. And I know there are huge backups there in the evening. I wonder if that is contributing to it and if there's anything you could possibly do about it. Yeah, we can we can um, we can get that passed up and see if if that can be looked at. I, I know we've looked at it a few times. Um, I think I think Brad and correct me if I'm wrong, I think probably some of the a lot of the issue there is the the temporary, um, MOT uh, or maintenance of traffic. So we call the temporary traffic pattern there with with the way that the uh, some of the lanes are closed. I think that probably um, might impact it a little bit as well. Um, but but certainly we can get that pass up and see if, if it can be looked into uh, to see how the, how the timings are uh, or if there's something that, that's going awry. Yeah, if you could get 30 more seconds of green time every cycle, well, wow, that should make a big difference. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any more uh, any more questions for tonight? And of course, if you think of any after the fact, you're always welcome to email or call me. Um, and you know, this is certainly not your last opportunity if you think of one uh, here in the next few hours or, or anytime this week. So, um, but definitely want to give everyone the opportunity now while we're while we're all here for the benefit of everyone. Okay, last call. Any more questions? Okay, well, we certainly appreciate everyone attending tonight. And Brad, unless you have anything else, um, I think we will uh, call it a wrap. No, I'm good. Thank you very much for everybody uh, for participating. And um, again, uh, Contact Nick Lulie if there's any any questions or concerns, and that'll make sure that I can get that taken care of as soon as possible. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending, and um, have a great rest of your week. I know it's probably a short week for most, so everyone uh, have a very safe holiday season. Thank you. Thank you.